What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host, and this is the Week 11, Week 11 DFS Preview. Man, Thanksgiving DFS on the horizon. Love me some Thanksgiving DFS, a little short three game. I like the three, two, three game slates. I think those things are fun. Uh, this should be a challenging slate, though, because there are lots of big time quarterbacks missing from the uh, the rankings or whatever you would call them. Joining me to break it down, as they do every Thursday, Keith Cummings, Frank Stanfield. What's up, fellas? What's going on? Not much. Speaking of elite quarterbacks, I just spent uh, $70 of my free agent acquisition budget on Andy Dalton in the Scott Fishbowl. Wow. Yikes. That feel good? <laughs> it kind of did. But, you know, it, it feels good to burn money sometimes. You feel bad later. I'll probably feel bad on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. But, um, you know. That reminds me, I need to check and see if I want, I'm assuming I won because I hadn't made an acquisition with Fab all season long in our Dynasty League. Yes, I did acquire Salvin Ahmed for $1,000 of Fab money. You spent your entire budget. I did. Well, um, you I need. I, I need to win this week. We are I'm locked into a battle for the final spot Correct. in that league. And um, I am currently in a dark situation with my, my lineup's not even good. This is, it's the worst case scenario. I'm basically in this league, the bears, right? Like I got out to a hot start. Reality is setting in. I'm creeping back to mediocrity. I'm clawing and fighting for the playoffs. And even if I make it, I'm not going to win anything, See, but I'm, I'm certainly not going to have a good draft pick next year. I'm mostly in the same place. I, I tried to, to sell earlier and was unable to uh, get what I thought was fair value. So the only thing that's different for me is I have Patrick Mahomes and I have Derrick Henry, and they have absurd playoff schedules. Mm. Um, so I do think there's a chance with those two, if I get in, that I beat some teams that are clearly a lot better than me just because of two players, because that happens in fantasy a lot. It's different in this league because we have 17 starters. Yes, um, and not to discuss this league for too long, but like, I have Saquon Barkley, so that's a nice asset. Mike Evans, great. I have this albatross named Todd Gurley hanging around. But like Henry Ruggs, uh, Cooper Cup, Brandon Ayuk, I feel okay about my team. I mean, like long term, it's got some holes, but whatever. Anyway, how'd you guys, how'd you do in DFS this week, Frank? Oh, it was quite the mixed bag. I had way too much exposure to the backup running backs and it seems like uh, I didn't learn because I'm about to go back to the well with backup running backs uh, but they were not very good so that crushed a lot of my hopes and dreams in in week 11. I was um, after the early games I was winning zero percent of what I had played with like five minutes left in that Bills Cardinals game I was down 75 percent uh, I ended up making like a 15% profit because nice. of the last two touchdowns. So yeah. Um, but I also played, I have this thing where I generally don't, all right. I set a parameter. Like I'm not going to play more than 70% exposure of any one guy. And I broke that last week for Mike Davis. Oh, Mike Davis didn't do very well. No, no. I had some Kyler. I had a Kyler. Uh, Kyler, Larry Fitz, Stefan Diggs stack with a, I, I had to, you know what? I, this is, it's very simple and clear, clear cut. Like why well, I didn't win anything last week. I went with Mike Davis and Aaron Jones. And if you did that, you didn't make any money. Cause Mike yeah. Davis gave you eight points and Aaron Jones had a jacked up price tag and a 40, like a you know, 40% owned gave you 14 points. Yeah. I had quite a few lineups with, Davis, Duke Johnson, and Geo all together, and then just spent up at wide receiver for Devontae Adams, which he was fine, but uh, you needed to have DeAndre Hopkins. You needed to have Diggs. I had a lot of John Brown last week, and he was okay, but obviously left that game and got hurt. But the people who had Diggs and Hopkins stacks with either Allen or, or Kyler Murray, uh, those were the teams that looked pretty good. And obviously Alvin Kamara was great, but he's always great. DeAndre Swift was kind of the key to unlocking a lot last week, I think. Yeah, Swift, I mean, um, did we talk about it? Do we? No, we haven't talked, but like we 
got the report earlier that morning that the Lions were ready to just kind of like let it all go with Swift. And well, well that was going to be my point is like he was, I mean, under 10% owned in basically every tournament you were in. And that was, that's sort of the news you got to follow on. You got to, you got to know when to parse the news. It is it's like right now I'm doing, and this won't be relevant because we're, this comes out Thursday morning, but like I'm trying to follow a bunch of NBA Twitter accounts and NBA mock drafts to figure out who to bet on in the NBA draft. Like the ability at DFS, it's important to be able to parse what information is important and what information is fluff. And it was very clear it, it, in hindsight, obviously it's very clear that that report from Tom Pelissero of NFL media, that Deandre Swift was going to be the guy for Detroit was a key piece of information to winning money in DFS because his price tag was $5,100. And he was outstanding, had 26 fantasy points. Yep, that was a big one for sure. Uh, and, Will, we could talk off air about the NBA draft because as a Knicks fan, I've, I've done entirely too much research. So I've got, a, I've got a lot stewing up here right now. I have, um, if, let's just say that if you're listening on, to this on Thursday, uh, by the time when you listen on Thursday night's recap or Friday's show, if Patrick Williams is the fourth overall pick, you will hear a very, 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 very happy me. James Wiseman won, Patrick Williams four, and I am doing a pants off dance off on the NBA draft. Anyway, that's happening. That's already happened. So let's get to the DFS. And we start. That was not a brief recap of last week, but whatever. We start with the Packers. This is a the, the over under. The totals of this week are submerged. Well, it's because the the Seahawks and the Cardinals are not on the main slate, and the Correct. Bills are on a bye, and the Chiefs and the Raiders are not on the main slate. Correct. Yeah, it's um, it's then going to be interesting. What's Monday night? The Monday night game. Tampa is. Bay and the Rams. No, I mean that's like six of the highest scoring teams in football. This is a this is kind of the DFS week I love, where it's like like a like a get in the mud slug fest. Figure out who's going to break out in crappy games. And we start with the Packers and the Colts. Colts minus two. This line has moved substantially to the point where Indianapolis is favored against Green Bay. The over under fifty one. I, I don't think it's unfair to suggest that Aaron Rodgers has been one of the best quarterbacks for DFS this year because of the Devontae Adams connection, but Heath, he has a tough matchup this week, eh, but a high total. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I like obviously Devontae Adams a ton. I, I, you almost on DraftKings are going to have to choose one of Adams, Kamara or cook. Mm. Maybe you can play two of Adams, Kamara or cook. Um, I think because of the pricing situation, Adams will be my favorite of those three. So pro- a guy I'm going to have a ton of exposure to. I don't currently have any plans of playing Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, you look at his game game log this season, and he's really just beat up on a lot of bad teams. I remember the one really tough matchup he had was at Tampa Bay, and he basically crapped his pants in that game. And say mm-hmm. what you want about the Colts. We keep waiting for them to fall off, but they're fourth in pass defense DVOA, and they've just looked the part all season Their long. defense is just good. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I would also suggest that if uh, Darius Leonard is playing in this game at 100%, which I don't – think he's even on the injury I mean maybe he is I haven't looked at the Colts injury report but and it's actually not even out because it's it's Wednesday we record this but if Darius Leonard plays the Packers are not gonna be able to do what they want to do which is run the football like they Aaron Jones will struggle in the spot I don't like Aaron Jones in the spot and I, I don't disagree with the Devontae Adams thing like I think he's just going to eat because that's what Devontae Adams does and his target share is so obscene I think it's him and Jacoby Myers <laughs> really guys with above like 30 percent target shares on the season I, I have no problem with Devontae Adams, but to Heath's point, he is very expensive. Is there any value coming back with Indianapolis here? I think Pittman is kind of sneaky. He has 15 targets over the last two games. He's 4,500, but everything that the Colts do is by committee. Every single thing. Yeah. Running backs, wide receivers, tight ends. They, they even brought in Jacoby Brissett to throw a Hail Mary last and to run a touchdown last year. And a quarterback sneak, yeah. And and quarterback they do everything is, by committee. So, like, three different tight ends. They're going to spread the ball around with the wide receivers. Uh, but I do think Phillip Rivers has been looking Pittman's way, and he is very affordable at 4,500. Um, it's a good matchup for the running backs, but your guess is as good as mine when it comes to the Colts. This seems like it could be a Naheem Hines game, up-tempo, mm. back and forth a little bit. He's 5,200. He's coming off a big game. Uh, but it feels like that would be the spot where he lets you down most. Is Naheem Hines going to be chalk? 
I was about to ask that I what his percentage so. would be. I think he might. Uh, I a don't. Huge game last Thursday. And by the way, last Thursday's game in which he annihilated the Titans defense was his birthday. I don't know if that matters, but I mean, yeah, I tend to think guys, you know. This was, it was the second time this season he's had at least 15 touches in a game. The first time was week one. The following week, he touched the ball one time. I, I have like, I don't, I'm not saying I dislike him as a tournament play. I would not want to play Naheem Hines in cash. I also think one thing that's very important here too, is that Frank Reich has come out and explicitly said that for the first 12 to 15 plays that the Colts are going to put um, Jonathan Taylor out there and he is going to be the running back for the first 12 to 15 plays. And then he has said that what they are going to do is allow I'm, – I'm blanking on his name, but the uh, – oh, Tom Rathman, the running backs coach. It's then Tom Rathman's call as to who gets the snaps and who gets the playing time, and that's how they've shifted it. Now, he said that before last week, which makes you – leads me to believe that it's possible that – Jonathan Taylor could see most of the carries, most of the looks, most of the snaps in the first 15 plays, and then it's just all Heinz from there on out. The problems are, one, what if Taylor looks awesome? And Rathman's like, all right, you know, the kid looks good. Let's let him try and eat against a bad pass rush, against a bad rush defense in Green Bay. Or two, what if this game is sort of a slog and it's not a shootout? And then all of a sudden you have what? You're capped at 35 total plays at the Colts run or something like that, and – You've already lost the first 15 to Jonathan Taylor. Then Hines becomes a liability. And JT's price tag on DraftKings is 5,800 too. Ooh. So keep that in mind. Like, it's a great matchup. Packers have allowed either 100 yards or a touchdown to a running back in every game this season. So it's a, there's a chance that Taylor does well. But there are also running backs that are cheaper than him that I like more on the slate. He saw 24% of the offensive snaps last week. He hasn't seen above 34% uh, since week six against the Bengals. Yeah. Since their week seven bye, he is third of the three running backs with 30% of the snaps. I don't, I don't know that you can, you can't play a chalky Hines and you can't, I don't, don't know that you can play Taylor. Well, not if you're playing one lineup, probably not if you're playing five lineups, if you're playing a bunch of lineups, then if you're playing 150 lineups, I might the, want a, a couple of, a couple of Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. If you're playing 150, I don't mind having a couple of Hines and a couple of Taylors. Right. Um, but you're right. I mean, 56% of the snaps last week, the only time he's been above 50 on the season was in week one. That's It's a concern. Um, all right. To the next game. I kind of like that under, by the way. Falcons at Saints. The Saints minus five, despite losing Drew Brees. Heath, they are a five-point favorite with an over-under 50 and a half. Is it because they upgraded at quarterback? No, no, no. But for fantasy purposes, they might have upgraded at quarterback. Um, like James Drew Brees, Winston's by the way, the fifth fun. highest priced quarterback on the slate. You should not play Drew Brees. That's my uh, stone cold lock of the week. Um, I, I, there's not a quarterback cheaper than Jameis Winston on DraftKings that I like more. Sure. So at fifty eight hundred. I'm probably going to have some exposure. I'm definitely, I'd rather play him than Matt Ryan. Um, I think if you're playing Jameis, then that probably means you're playing Kamara and not Adams. But also if you're playing Jameis, you're, you're probably going to get, make one more run at it with Michael Thomas. Oh, I actually like Michael Thomas quite a bit in this spot. Uh, Jameis threw 11 passes last week and I believe it was Five of them went to Michael Thomas. So it's an extremely small sample size, but it's a great matchup against the Falcons. The last time we saw their defense, uh, they gave up a ton of garbage time production to Drew Locke, and Jerry Judy had a big game in that in that game as well. So uh, I do like Michael Thomas at 7,300. Alvin Kamara saw, I believe it was four pass attempts of those 11 that Winston had last week. So I think it's going to be a lot to Thomas, a lot to Kamara. I agree with Heath. I like Winston at 5,900 there. Might be one other quarterback. Joe Burrow's kind of interesting at 5,500, but we could talk about him a little bit later on. Uh, but it's a fun game. It's inside of a dome. It's a high total. It's a close spread. So uh, I, re I like Winston more so for tournaments than, than Cash just because we know what his floor is. I don't think anybody can know the answer to this, but I, I find it to be one of the most fascinating questions of 
week 11 and moving forward is what will Sean Payton do to, with this offense with Jameis Winston under center? Will it be basically the same thing that Drew Brees ran? Will he go more vertical because he's a quarterback with a stronger arm? They haven't really been vertical for like five years now. So I, I don't know that that's what will happen. Or will it even be sort of a, maybe a little more juiced up version of what uh, we saw Teddy Bridgewater want, run last year when Drew Brees was out? Because if you know, you're sort of just looking through these, it's, you know, early on, Teddy is just heavily targeting uh, both, you know, Alvin Kamara and, and Michael Thomas. I mean, it's just, and that's what Drew Brees does anyway. I just wonder if they might even be more aggressive in their just, these are the two guys we're targeting on quick, quick. You're not making mistakes. Get the ball, like read the slant, read the slant. And if you've got it, throw it. And if not, you're going to dump it off to Kamara and let's let these guys cook. And then we'll let our defense do some work. Yeah, that sounds accurate. I don't, Sean Payton's a smart dude. I don't think he wants Jameis Winston throwing the ball 40 plus times in this game and certainly not taking shots downfield unless they're playing from behind. Um, but yeah, I would assume that they do a lot of what they've done all season. Maybe maybe take one or two shots, which they don't normally do with Drew Brees. Uh, but I would expect a lot of just short passes to Thomas and Kamara and let these guys do work after the catch. I will say also on this game, um, I don't have a whole lot of interest in the Falcon side, but Hayden Hurst will likely be the tight end that I have the most exposure to this week. Like we talk about it being a bad week at quarterback. Tight ends and abysmal as it is. And now you're taking Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller off the slate as well as Gronk. Um, so yeah, it's, it's slim pickings at tight end, but I do like the fact that Hurst's been more involved in terms of target share and his price is pretty palatable. 4,400, I think on DraftKings. Yeah, he's 4,400. He has six plus targets in five of his last six games. Do you think the Teddy Bridgewater uh, performance is indicative of anything that Jameis might do? Like in terms of, I'm Teddy just looking Bridgewater at is, in my opinion, and I, I, this is, could be wrong. Stylistically, he's much more Drew Brees than Jameis Winston. Oh, I don't think that's wrong at all. I think that's, um, so I don't I, know. Like, I don't know if we can learn anything from that because they didn't really have to change stylistically. They made it more conservative by a little bit. They just didn't right. throw downfield at all. And Breeze wasn't doing it much anyway. I was just looking at the the targets. Kamara missed one game, but I mean, and it was like the first game he fed Kamara had like 10 carries and 10 targets. And then after that, it was like Michael Thomas was getting 10 plus targets every single week. And so I just wonder, I think that's possible. I think Michael Thomas could have a pretty big game with Jameis Winston. Under center. So I like him there too. Uh, Julio... I like Julio if Ridley's out, but it sounds like Ridley's going to be back and the Falcons spread the ball around. One of those two guys could go off, but the Saints defense has actually looked much better the past couple of weeks. Yeah. So I'm with Heath mostly that I'm not overly interested in the Falcons side. Yeah, I, I think that if I were contemplating a Julio Jones play at $7,500, I would just go with Michael Thomas at 73 or Keenan Allen at 74 Oh, yes. Oh, like those yeah. are, All the or, Keenan Allen. Yeah. Well, let's. Uh, there's no way that game is next because you know it's no. a high high total to get there. Titans at the Ravens, a surprisingly high total, 49. Ravens minus six and a half. Uh, one of the other wide receivers in that range was AJ Brown at 7,200. I don't know if I want to get involved with him against the the Ravens defense though. Um, I this is I don't really like this game despite the high total. Can I? Can, is Lamar going to be low owned? So this is the week. Fi this is the week. Is I'm, this I, the week? Because I'm sick and tired of losing my gosh darn money waiting for 2019 Lamar Jackson to show up. And I know the second I stop playing him, he's going he's gonna to pop. I know. So you're it. doing the same thing with Lamar I'm doing with Tyler Lockett. Thankfully, Tyler Lockett's not on the main slate this week, so I can't do it. Okay. Uh, no, I, I kind of think like this Titans defense is really not very good. It's terrible. I, I kind of want to play some Lamar and Marquise Brown. I definitely want to play some Lamar and Mark Andrews. And I think it could be like a Devin DuVernay at 3,000 stone cold minimum who's getting a little bit more playing time. Um, I'm not playing Willie Sneed, so don't even ask me about that. Uh, yeah, I have not played Lamar all season, and I, I think I've made that pretty well known, but I kind of think that this is the Lamar week. <laughs> yeah. 
He is, uh, he's the highest priced quarterback. I think there might be a little bit of a revenge factor here as well. You know, lost to Tennessee in, in the playoffs. Um, and they just gave up a rushing touchdown to Jacoby Brissett. They gave up 300 passing yards to Phillip Rivers. The Titans are 25th in pass defense DVOA. Uh, I, they are sixth in DraftKings points allowed to quarterbacks and second in DraftKings points allowed to wide receivers. I like Good. Lamar. Uh, Hollywood Brown, it's really hard for me to come around on him, but Andrews <laughs> definitely 4,900. I just played 75% of the snaps. There's no Nick Boyle, so I'd expect more playing time and more routes run for Andrews as well uh, and targets. So, yeah, definitely like Lamar and Andrews in this spot. And then just bring it back with Corey Davis. Don't hate it. The um, the thing about the the Ravens that bugs me, and I've been saying this all week, for really for two or three weeks, like they can do what they did last year on offense, even without Ronnie Stanley and Nick Boyle. We've seen them do this at various points in the season, and they just run that run heavy offense, and it destroys people. They ran it, they pounded the Chiefs in the, into the ground on their first drive. They slaughtered the Patriots in their second drive there. And they just keep going away from it. And I don't know if it's like we're trying to get Lamar reps in the pocket and make him a pocket passer thing. I, I don't really understand it. It's not like they've been that awful. But, man, I mean, it is frustrating to see them operate at that kind of efficiency and then just stop. Yeah, I think the Ravens are just kind of looking out for Lamar's, I guess, health? long-term health. Like, they just don't want him running as much. He's not running – as efficiently, I believe it was last year, 80 rushing yards per game. This year, it's below 60. It's like right around 56 or 58 rushing yards per game. So that's obviously affected his uh, his fantasy output and his touchdown rate. I mean, we all knew it was going to come down entering the season, yep. but I mean, it has really come down compared to last year. So I, I think the touchdown rate could get back on track against the Titans defense. So we're smashing Lamar. I'm smashing Lamar. And a reminder, like we've talked about Marquise Brown, Deverne, Mark Andrews, Willie Sneed. No, don't do that. Uh, you don't need to stack with Lamar. Like, feel free to play Lamar with no stack whatsoever. You're comfortable doing absolutely no stack. I am comfortable doing Lamar Jackson with no stack. He's one of the only quarterbacks. Well, I mean, some weeks Kyler's like that too. But right. when so much of your fantasy production comes on the ground, it would not be that surprising if he throws two touchdowns to two different guys throws for 150 yards and runs for two touchdowns, has a monster day, and none of the other guys on his team are actually that good for fantasy. That, that's so fair. And That's happened a lot. And look, like the Marquise Brown thing, you can be right, and it's, it's tough because, believe me, I have stacked him plenty. You can be correct about Lamar and then like immediately ruin your – week by having a, the incorrect Lamar stack. Like if you go with Hollywood and he doesn't do anything and Lamar goes off, you're not, you know what I mean? Like that can, that can be a serious detriment to your, your performance. And it's very likely that Hollywood Brown does not go off <laughs> just because that's basically been his 2020 season. Uh, just uh, looks like, is Lamar going to be 5% owned? I, I'm hoping below 10. I think he'll be below 10, but higher than five. So I like seven, eight. Okay. I'm looking at a projection, an early week projection that um, but has everybody below 10. Like if you're looking at a four point per pass touchdown league um, scoring system and you're doing projections, I would be surprised if Lamar Jackson was not your highest projected quarterback this week. He's mine on the slate. In terms of points, projected points. Yes. Yes. Not counting all the good quarterbacks playing in prime time. Right. It's really rare that the highest, the guy with the highest projection or the second highest projection is not 10 to 15% rostered. So if he's below 10%, that's the situation to try to take advantage of. That's right. And it part of part and parcel of it is he's 7,300. And there are other options that are appealing at a much lower price tag. And that's sort of how DFS works. Uh, one of those options, uh, anything by else you like on the Titans at all? Not really, right? No, I, I'd say stay away from Derrick Henry at 8K. Just He has no role in the passing game, and, and for him to pay off that salary, he's got to go for like 102, which is certainly possible, but I just wouldn't bet on it. Well, the other reason, Frank, that you would stay the hell away from Derrick Henry is that for $1,000 more, you can just have Dalvin Cook. 
who is playing the Dallas Cowboys, and that's a thousand dollars. That's a lot of salary. Don't get me wrong. I don't see how, and again, I'm going to say this now on Wednesday as we're recording, and I can't wait to galaxy rate myself out of it on Sunday because it shouldn't matter how chalky he is. Dalvin Cook is an automatic smash lock slam dunk play this weekend. I don't care how much he uh, pr- uh, roster sh- roster rate he has. So you're you're Dalvin over Adams and Kamara. I think so. Yes. It's hard to argue it. And here's the logic is that he almost got to a hundred rushing yards against the bears. Now granted Akeem Hicks went out, he got 30 carries. That's a little bit of a red flag that they might mix Madison in more here, but I, from what, so Brady Quinn has talked to Dalvin cook on his radio show in the last like two or three weeks. And I think I mentioned this before Dalvin basically said, and it makes sense. If you think about it, he's like, yeah, this is, this is good. This is going to be the Dalvin cook show. Like I'm going to take whatever they want to give me. And I'm going to run with it. And no, none of the parties are bothered here because he's already been paid. You know, like he, it's not like he's on the final year of his rookie deal and they're wearing him into the ground. Then they're going to cut him and let him or let him walk. They are, they have paid him his money and they're giving him the ball 30 plus times a a game, as long as the game's close. And this game might not be close, but if it's not, it's because Dalvin already went ballistic, right? I think so. He's one of the few running backs that has that, slate winning potential too we've seen that multiple times this season uh and i looked this up earlier today dalvin cook is averaging 29.8 touches per game in the vikings four wins this season they're favored by seven points in the spot at home against the dallas cowboys with andy dalton returning so it seems like a spot where they're expected to win be playing with a lead and all of those things should favor dalvin cook and on top of that it's a really good matchup because the cowboys allow 4.8 yards per carry to running backs so it's hard to argue against dalvin cook now, having said that, Heath, he's going to be like 30% on bare minimum. Yeah. So that's a, that's a problem. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I would probably just like to see which of those three, Cook, Kamara, or Adams, is going to have a lower roster rate and play that one. But Adams, I think points per dollar is the better play. Okay. Um, Adams, I think there's a good chance Adams is not even the highest, uh, highest rostered wide receiver because of his price tag. Right. I think Cook is an absolute mortal lock to be the highest rostered running back. And then I think as a result of that, Kamara will be like, you, you can't have both of them. They're $9,000. No, each. but if even if 30, like, I don't know how many lineups you're going to see that doesn't have one of those guys. I would guess that 60% of every lineup has both of the, one of those two running backs. Right, and, and 95% of lineups have, one of those two running backs or Devontae Adams. Yeah, oh, for sure. So they can yeah. all be 30% roster. Right. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I think that's sort of the, I mean, that's to your point, that's the decision you're making night. Like, can you, I don't know if you can skew away from all three of the guys. That's probably stupid, but I, yeah, I mean, they're all, they're all very playable. Are the cow are the, any of Andy Dalton's weapons playable against the, the Vikings defense, which has looked better, but maybe not great. I kind of like Amari Cooper at 5,400 just because he's still that alpha wide receiver and the Vikings, yes, while they've looked better, they still have allowed some very big games to wide receivers this season. So uh, if we're expecting them to play from behind and Dalvin Cook is doing all this you know, on the other side of the field, uh, the Cowboys are playing from behind, I do think Amari Cooper likely leads the team in targets. And at 5,400, it's not bad. There's a lot of wide receivers in this like 5 to 6K range this week that are very usable. Yeah, I um, I don't even hate playing a little bit of contrarian Zeke. Um, I I kind of think the Cowboys are going to be better now. Their offensive line's healthier. Andy Dalton's better than Ben DiNucci and Garrett Gilbert. They're coming off of a bye. The Vikings' defense is atrocious. I I kind of think the Cowboys are okay and score some points here. Is is Andy? Is it? Could you stack? Andy Dalton, one of his wide, can you double stack Andy Dalton with Dalvin Cook? You could. <laughs> Is that asking for it? Feels I've like not that. seen Andy Dalton's price. 5300 He still has the C19 next to his picture yeah. on, uh, on DraftKings, so that'll keep his ownership down. Sure will. <laughs> um, but if you think about it, so we only saw – when did when did Dak get hurt? Dak got hurt against the – 
We saw basically one game and two very small partial games. We saw one complete game from Andy Dalton. Wait, did that get hurt against the Giants or the Cardinals? The Giants. I don't. I've got to Okay, so Dak got hurt against the Giants, and Andy Dalton came in and went 9 of 11 for 111 yards and no touchdowns, and then Cedric Wilson had that passing touchdown. Yeah. But then Andy Dalton started all of the – he played the entire Arizona game, uh, that Monday night game, and they were awful. Andy Dalton in primetime, remember? And then he started the Washington game, and that's when um, the Washington uh, – John Bostick, the Washington linebacker, went head hunting and knocked him out. So he's played two ga- two almost yeah, he's played like basically two full games. Has not been that impressive. But th- I don't think this is a terrible matchup. Minnesota's defense was okay against Chicago. That's just a easy match. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm again talking myself into something I don't need to be talking myself into here. Michael Gallup's 3700? Andy Dalton looks Michael Gallup's way. I am okay. I I've I've done it again. Uh, you can play Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, and Devontae Adams all in the same lineup. With Michael Gallup. With Andy Dalton, Michael Gallup, and Dalton Schultz stacked up. Hello. Those are two prime Andy Dalton targets, too. Those are prime <laughs> Andy Dalton targets. Frank is throwing up in his mouth a little bit. All right, let's say that hypothetically um, all of Devontae Adams, Alvin Kamara, and Dalvin Cook pay off their exorbitant price tags. You're probably already at 100 DraftKings points right there. Yeah. I- assuming they pay it off. And if those guys don't pay it off, then what this lineup you've And really, Dalton, Gallup, and Schultz ought to be worth another 100. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I mean, all I'm saying is that at that point, from Dalton, Gallup, and Schultz, you probably need 40 points total. Just to cash, yeah. Yeah, yeah just to cash. But then you also have a, t- you have a, a flex – another uh, yeah we, yeah I, I was gonna wait and fill the rest of the lineup in with you when you guys give your favorite uh cheap place okay by the way those were great last week jakeem grant and uh josh reynolds and, did i have did i play any jakeem grant obviously not did i have like J- josh reynolds in the wrong lineup obviously jakeem grant's still only 3500 so he still qualifies okay well, so we're we're interested in this cowboy stack I'm more interested now that I realize I can play those three studs all in the same lineup. Yeah. If you want to go stars and scrubs and build, I'm not sure Frank's Cowboys interested roster. yet. He doesn't look particularly interested. He looks let's scared. talk about, let's talk about another quarterback that may cause you to veer away from Andy Dalton. The one, the only cam Newton, a relatively cheap price, 6,200. He is at the Texans. The Pats are minus two in Houston. Um, I would say that Bill Belichick has never lost to Bill O'Brien, but it's irrelevant because Bill O'Brien got fired and then redunked on by all the memes coming out with DeAndre Hopkins caught a Hail Mary touchdown pass to win the game for the Cardinals. The over-under here is 48. I have a hard time not being interested in Cam, mainly because the Texans are god-awful against the run. Like, maybe the worst team in football against the run. And I think that there is a... I don't know if it's a Cam Damian Harris stack, if that's even a viable stack, mm. or like a I don't know if, is that is that a stack? I mean, it's not the the there's no actual correlation there. Right. So I don't think you just I mean, get all the Patriots two players yours. in the same team. But I yeah, I guess it would be. Um a Jacoby Myers would be the guy if you wanted to correlate it at some point. You know, Jacoby Myers has still never caught a touchdown pass I, in the NFL. I, I'm as a as a the president of the Jacoby Myers fan club, as you can see on the YouTube channel. I am well aware that he has not caught a touchdown pass. He does have he has thrown a touchdown pass though. Yes. Correct. It'd be a good week for his first touchdown catch. Are you gonna have a lot of Jacoby Myers? I'm gonna have a little Jacoby Myers. Um I currently don't have Cam as one of my core quarterbacks. Not to say that I won't play any of them and that could change. Um, but I just kind of think like they might run the ball. 200 times and it might not be that many cam rushes it's going to depend I, on what watson does i can see that being um a thing and in fact if you look at i'm trying to find the points allowed to wide receivers the texans are not DraftKings points allowed to wide receivers the texans are not even top 10 
but that's because if you go and look at uh, fantasy points allowed to running backs, the Texans are third most behind only the Lions and the Packers. Yeah, you, I mean, you want to like one of the running backs for the Patriots, but they do kind of spread it around, and, and Damian Harris is hard to get overly excited about on DraftKings because he is not going to catch the ball at all. So he's kind of like a mini version of Derrick Henry where you just need him to go off on the ground, which is certainly possible in this matchup. Uh, but Burkhead gets used in the red zone, and Cam likes to call his own number in the red zone and run. So that does kind of put a cap on what Harris's upside can be. Uh, I like Jacoby Myers, 4,900. From week seven on, he has a 39% target share, which is the most in the NFL, which is just... PFF's third-ranked rated wide receiver this season. Yeah, no, he's looked apart. He's performed very well for them. You have to make sure that Edelman remains out because I believe he's eligible to return this week. Uh, but yeah, that would be a good matchup. On the other side, I don't know what we have to do for Brandon Cooks to get, like, for them to raise his price. He's $5,200, and... He is the wide receiver seven in fantasy points per game since Bill O'Brien has been fired. He is a top 10 PPR wide receiver on a per game basis. So at 5,200, uh, I love Brandon Cooks. I think Duke Johnson's in a good spot again at 54, even though it's like kind of gross. Um, yeah, I like this game in general. Both defenses are terrible. I mostly am like you referenced Duke Johnson. We'll get the rest of them later. I'm mostly on board with I'm just going back to all of the backup running backs and I don't care. <laughs> IDC, IDC, IDC. Isn't that the, the, the meme? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what the kids say. IDC. I'm playing Mike Davis. I'm playing Geo. I'm playing Duke Johnson. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, and let's throw Kalen Balaj in that mix and we'll get to him. It's a revenge game if Eckler does not return. Aren't all of Kalen Balaj's games revenge games? Yeah, yeah It's like a Ryan Fitzpatrick revenge game. It's <laughs> Of course, it's it's always a revenge game. I, I do think the this is a sneaky stack game in the sense that both defenses are awful. Yes. You know, it's like we saw that that Jets Pats Monday night football game where the, the total was 42, and that was a, a criminal mistake. Like the Texans didn't score last week. People are sort of off of them. They, they had played in bad weather. It was tough in Cleveland. It wasn't like a great defense. The Patriots defense will not slow down uh Deshaun Watson, I don't think. I this is, feels like a great spot for garbage time yards for Deshaun Watson. Is, is Deshaun Watson playable? Oh, absolutely. He oh, was, yeah, for sure. He was one of the first names I looked at this week. He was He's probably one of my top three favorite quarterbacks, just based on his price, 6,500. Seems too low. Points per dollar-wise, he is my favorite quarterback on the slate. Can you go – are you comfortable double stacking Sean Watson with Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, and then bringing it back with Jacoby Myers? Or bringing it back with Damian Harris. Sure. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're just assuming a Patriots run fest followed by – because the, the yeah all right I, that is that's a great stack I this is this is the game I think that's flying under the radar and which means if I know that on Wednesday everybody knows that all right let's take a break when we come back we will rip through the rest of the games Eagles at Browns the Browns are minus three the over under is forty seven and a half um, the weather how's this over under forty seven and a half this should be lower it's been dropping quickly I believe it was over fifty at one point. Yeah, so the weather is now looking like it's 60% rain, chance of rain all day. The wind does not look as bad. It's only going to be 10 to 12 miles an hour right now, but that's all, this is on Wednesday. This could change. It seems if like it's people 10 are, to 12, I don't really care if it's raining. Yeah. If it's 14, I yeah, the Browns are just playing slug i don't really like this game at all i don't like maybe for me a little bit of contrarian travis fulgham um but that's pretty much it i think i don't like anybody in this game there's yeah i if the wind is not too bad i kind of like jalen rager at 4300 uh over the past two games with since he's been back he leads the team in target share that's kind of been the reason why we've seen fulgham take a little bit of a back seat so I think it's a 21% target share over the last two games for Rager. Uh, and the Browns' defense is not great, but just pay attention to that win as we have to do every time there's a game in Cleveland this time of year. Uh, but Rager, 4,300. And Goddard at 38 is not terrible. Kind of trying to talk myself into this one. Can't You can't touch Chubb. Or Chubb's 77,000. Hunt's 6,700. They both paid off their price tags last week, even though they're expensive. But I, I said you could play both of them. I was right. Um 
I don't know that you can play either of them this week, though, because the Eagles are actually decent against the run. And if the weather is better, they are not going to get the number of carries that they've been getting. So I remember the last two weeks where they, you know, where they ran bad weather, they had the Raiders and then the Texans who were terrible against the run. So I probably pass on that, especially with, you know, I mean, like Zeke Elliott, 6,500. DeAndre Swift, 6,400. I mean, James Robinson, 6,400. They're just better options who aren't going to be splitting carries. Yeah, and the backup running backs, too. We just spoke about Duke Johnson. He hasn't looked good, but uh, he just played 95% of the snaps and is going to see basically all the Texans running back touches. So it's hard to get excited about the Browns in this spot. Uh, It's a very tough matchup. The Eagles have not allowed a running back over 63 rushing yards in seven straight games. Mm. No, thank you, then. Jets at Chargers. Chargers minus eight and a half over under 47. We referenced Keenan Allen earlier. It is fairly difficult, even though he cut his hair, Heath, not to think that Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen could be a good stack here. I, uh, Herbert's definitely one of my top three or four quarterbacks to play on this slate. Uh, Anybody against the Jets really is the rule. Kalen Balazs in a very good spot as well. Going to play some of him. Um, I will have some Hunter Henry. I I don't I'd like to know who's playing wide receiver for the Jets this week. I was kind of excited about Brashad Perryman, but it sounds like he's hurt again now. Um he Intel has Memphis looked good. He has looked good. If Perryman was out, I would like both Mims and Crowder as bringbacks. And then there's like I don't know if this is actually a thing that's going to happen. But there are rumors circulating that we are done with the Frank Gore as a lead running back situation, and Michael P. Ryan will be the feature back the rest of the season. If that's the case at 4,400, he's, hmm. he's kind of a fun option as well because his Chargers defense is not very good. I think the question is, are you willing to believe that? <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, it's right, true. Exactly. Like, are you willing to yes. believe friggin adam gase is gonna like is it the deandre swift situation again it might be yeah no one has ever gone broke betting on adam gase i saw a report earlier today uh where they were kind of reiterating that and they were talking to gase about p ryan he's like yeah p ryan we're gonna try and get him more involved but this is the best that frank gore has ever looked so i think we you know he's still gonna be involved it's hard to trust but uh start all i get all the chargers in i'm Keenan Allen will likely be my most rostered wide receiver this week at 7,200, and you could definitely stack him with Justin Herbert. Uh, Herbert and Watson are probably, and Lamar, are probably my three favorite quarterbacks this week. Um, and, yeah, Keenan Allen just seen a massive target share with Herbert, uh, with Herbert as the guy. Denzel Mims is only 3,300. So Denzel Mims is on my list of cheap options that we'll get to in a second. Steelers at the Jaguars. The Steelers minus 10. Uh, in Jacksonville, they're trying to stay undefeated and move to 10 and 0. The over under 46 and a half. I'll be honest, I don't like anything. Here's my question. Because I, two weeks ago, I was under the impression that this was not the old Ben Roethlisberger as offensive coordinator Steelers. And the pass attempts weren't there. He was really only averaging like 32 attempts per game. You couldn't play the receivers because there wasn't enough volume there. The past two weeks, they've paid, played the Cowboys and the Bengals, and they've thrown 42 and 46 passes. If if we've given Ben the play calling reins back, then he's a smash against Jacksonville because he That's can do fair. whatever he wants. Watch and see what he does in practice this week because last week he didn't pra- he he told Mike Tomlin he didn't want to practice at all. He said he threw he didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. And then he threw 50 balls like on the side on Friday and he came out and he looked fantastic on Sunday. If Tomlin lets him do that again this week, then I think you're probably right. Who would you stack him with? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I would choose Juju. Um, probably I would lean Juju and Ebron. But like if you're building 10, Ben Roethlisberger lineups, I think you want a mixture of all the guys. Yeah, and we've seen this now two games in a row where each of their big three wide receivers has gotten theirs. So Because he's throwing 40 passes a game. Yeah, you can do that with that type of volume. I kind of just want to take the cheapest one, and that's Deontay Johnson at 5,900. And he's probably the least talented of the three, but he's 
getting the targets. They all are right now. It's just hard to completely fade this spot, Will, because they have one of the highest team totals this week. The Steelers are like 29 and a half. They're expected yeah. four touchdowns scored. They haven't been able to run the ball well recently with James Conner. And which, Jacksonville's which, run defense has been sneaky okay at times. Yeah, year. like they, they allowed that huge game to Derrick Henry, and then we all thought that that was the turning point, and, and their, their run defense was just going to be terrible since then. And we keep trying to use running backs against Jaguars and it, like Aaron Jones was okay last week. Yeah, it doesn't work. So, yeah, if they're going to score four touchdowns, it might be on the arm of Big Ben. All right. Big ben. Everybody's been staying away from Big Ben. Maybe it's a great time to jump on. And with all these quarterbacks, you shouldn't be that highly owned. Bengals at Washington. Washington minus one over under 46 and a half. I fear for the safety of Joe Burrow and the health of Joe Burrow here. There's a thing with him and Chase Young, right? Yeah. yeah. Is, there, is there like a thing or is it just like, like they don't like each other or is it just a thing? Like a one-two I, thing. I I thought there was a thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> now I got Everybody's it. Googling Chase Young, Joe Burrow. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly um, what I just did. Uh, yeah, maybe there's not a thing. Maybe I made it up. Yeah, I don't think there's a thing. I think there's going to be a thing with Chase Young, Zach, and Joe Burrow. <laughs> Um, I don't love this game. I'm probably going to play some Geo. AJ Green is like $3,500. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a good reason for that. He's like $500 <laughs> more than he should be. It's like $700 per target, but infinity dollars per catches because he <laughs> caught zero. He's, he's, he's not very good. Um, any, any interest in Terry McLaurin? I don't see how you can't not be excited about him. The, uh, we just spoke about the Steelers wide receivers all going off. That was against the Bengals defense. McLaurin is at sixty nine hundred dollars, so he's three dollars cheaper, uh, three hundred dollars cheaper than Keenan Allen. I like McLaurin, don't love him. Uh, his target share has actually gone down, even with Alex Smith throwing all these passes. So keep that in mind. But uh, JD, JD McKissick, JD McKissick at fifty two hundred. Uh, he has twenty nine targets over the last two games. He had eleven targets in the first half last week. Eleven targets in the first I half. The one thing that I think the Bengals allow the third fewest Passes. receiving yards to running backs. And that I think Aiden, that's a, we give up a lot of running yards thing. Yes. Also, I think it, like JD McKissick's mostly playing the slot now. He's sure. not lining up in the backfield. So I'm not sure that matters. Okay. Um, anyway, moving along. We don't need. Oh, I love Logan Thomas, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just a great matchup. And he's, you want to spend down a tight end. He's a good way to do it. I like it. Dolphins minus three and a half at the Broncos over under 45. It's weird. The, the, the top end totals are not there this week, but neither are the bottom end. To like there's no forties uh, through 40, you know, there's no 40 through 44, which I guess is good. Uh, any interest in anybody here? He's Jakeem grants 3,500. He might be my cheap play if he's not somebody else's. Jerry Judy's been awesome. I don't know how you get there with uh, hurt drew lock and Brett Rippon playing. Yeah, and Xavier Howard on the other side of the field. That yep. certainly does not make things easier for uh, Jerry Judy. Uh, Savan Ahmed, I think, is in play just based on the usage that he has seen the past couple of weeks. He had 20-plus touches last week. He played about 75% of the snaps. So uh, just want to spend down at running back. I like Ahmed. Um, and cheap wide receivers in this game. Jakeem Grant is sub 4K. Uh, KJ Hamler, very sneaky, has just evolved as the slot wide receiver for the Broncos, and he's $3,600, and the targets have been up for him as well. The Broncos worry me because they basically don't – they basically lie there and act dead until the fourth quarter. So you're you're entirely reliant on what they do in the fourth quarter to get your production, it feels like. Yeah, I don't want to play any Broncos. Yeah, and the Dolphins – I mean, did you did you hear the, the quotes coming out of the Chargers after that game? No. They were like, they were like we didn't know – Keenan Allen said, like, we didn't know what was going on. Like, the stuff that Brian Flores threw – at Justin Herbert completely and utterly flummoxed him. I saw Daniel Jeremiah had a bre great breakdown of it, the Amoeba defense on NFL on NFL Network uh, last week or this week, I guess. And it's basically like they had 11 guys and none of them were in a three-point stance. And so it's like you had no idea who was rushing, who was dropping, and they were switching up man versus zone and cover three and – like Herbert was lost in the woods and I don't think that will get any better with Brett Rippon or Drew Locke. 
Dolphins defense is in play. Yeah, I'll for sure. Uh, okay. Lions Panthers is off the board. Matthew Stafford has a fractured finger, but nine good ones. And Teddy Bridgewater is dealing with a knee injury. Fortunately, not to his previously reconstructed knee. I don't know how much interest you have in any of these. I, I guess DeAndre Swift has to be interesting, right? Both running backs, I think, are. Back yeah. to the Mike Davis well, huh? I like Why Swift not? quite a bit at 6,400. Oh, by the way, the Dolphins' defense is 3,400. That's kind of expensive, but I sort of like that. Yeah. The Dolphins' defense is one that I'm looking at. The Bengals, if you want to spend down the Bengals and the Falcons, just in case Winston turns back into James Winston. So uh, those are the defenses. But for this game, uh, DeAndre Swift, for sure. We talked about what he did last week. Season high, 73% of the snaps. He ran 25 routes. Uh, he had 21 touches, a season high, 16 carries. And now he gets the Panthers, who are allowing 4.9 yards per carry to running back. So 6,400, definitely in play at that mid-tier price for Swift. He'll obviously be a lot more chalky than he was last week. I would imagine. For sure. Um, Lions give up the most fantasy points and the most receiving yards to opposing running backs. Ooh. The problem, Heath, is just the price tag on Davis, right? So he's 6,800, and, and mm -hmm. I really like the matchup, but he, just, he hasn't looked great the past couple of weeks. I know he left the game last week a little bit. He was banged up. Uh, I wonder if, because he was used so much early on in the season, is he kind of starting to fade? And that's something that's creeping into my mind for Mike Davis. Mm. He is looking like he could be 20-plus percent on too. He's the obvious drop-down off of, you know, like a – if you want to, if you want Devonte Adams right. and not, you know, Kamara or Cook, you drop down to Mike Davis. Or I'd, Swift. I'd personally rather just take the four hundred dollars savings from Davis and, and use it on Swift. Uh, same, same, or Antonio Gibson. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be twenty. I, I, I I'm going to dispute the twenty percent, and I could be wrong. It's early in the week for those projections. It's, it's way too early for the – Right. Like, I think I Swift will be much more highly rostered than than uh, Davis, but maybe I not. would think so too. But we'll see. Okay, let's get to our chalk plays of the week. You don't care. You're playing it anyway. I guess this is basically you're picking between Devontae Adams, Alvin Kamara, and uh, – Well, and, unless you uh, play Andy Dalton, then you don't have to choose. That's true. But I'm guessing you're going to go with Devontae Adams. <laughs> I am going to take Devontae Adams. Um, I mean, he's – 400 cheaper than Cook, 600 cheaper than Kamara, and he's shown us the 30 to 40 point upside multiple times. I don't think the Packers will run very well against Indianapolis, and I don't trust MVS or Lazard, so let's throw it to Devontae Adams 15 times. Okay, Frank. I'm going to shock the world here, he, uh, Will, and I'm going to take neither of the running backs. I like Keenan Allen. I think on a, a points per dollar basis, he is my favorite wide receiver this week, even more so than Devontae Adams. Uh, and I do think that Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen will probably be the fourth highest rostered player this week outside of those top three. Uh, and I'm still going to play him anyway. I think you're probably correct about the roster rate for him. And I don't blame you for playing him. I will take, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to take Dalvin cook. I'm not going to overthink it. I think he'll be the highest projected player on the entire slate. I think he will pay it off unless there's some sort of injury report designation, or there's some sort of hint that um, they, they want to give Alexander Madison more carries. But I think in that bears game, and in the last few weeks, they have shown this is not, they're not going to like dial it back unless they have a huge lead. Like they started giving Madison some carries against the Packers with a big lead, but like Cook is just going to be the guy. And so I am going to ride him until his legs fall off, just like Mike Zimmer. How about cheap options, Heath? $4,000 or less. So it can be $4,000 or less on DraftKings, your super value play of the week. Yeah, I will go with uh, Jakeem Grant. I liked his involvement. He's essentially the number three option in the passing game right now behind Devontae Parker and Mike Gesicki, and he might be ahead of Gesicki some weeks. Uh, Frank mentioned it. It's a terribly tough matchup for Devontae Parker. Or no, it's a terribly tough matchup on the other side. But still, I, I think Grant, Grant will have a good game. Yeah, I should have had more. <laughs> we talked him up last week. Uh, I've been hanging out with you for too long now, Will, because, you know, we talked uh, we talked up Jakeem Grant and Josh Reynolds, and I just didn't have enough of either one. So that was frustrating, uh, but I will take Logan Thomas. Spend down a tight end, 3,300. Okay. Um, I like uh, Jakeem Grant. I like that Logan Thomas call as well. I had a couple guys on here. I will mention that Michael Gallup and Dalton Schultz made the list, just looking, scrolling through it, and Dallas Goddard. We mentioned them as guys that we liked as well. 
Uh, Guyton for the Chargers, I think, is an interesting play if you want to, uh, you know, it's, he won't get a lot of targets, but deep threat against a bad secondary. But then my guy is going to be Denzel Mims. Cheap, probably in a shootout, got a ton of targets, can be really explosive. I think he can have some yards after the catch and maybe a deep ball this week. I like Mims to have a, a big week, and I think the Jets will – Keep it kind of close with the Chargers in this game. And maybe you're going to beat the Chargers who find ways to lose every week. All right. Um, we usually talk about beer at the end of the show. Unless you're dying to give out a beer wreck, by all means, fire away. But Heath has to get somewhere. So if you have beer wrecks, Heath, it's up to you. I did stop at Florida Keys Brewing. I went down to the Keys on Friday last week and uh, had a bean me up scotchy. It is a Key West rum barrel aged oatmeal stout. Hey. <laughs> Yes, it was fantastic. I hope you let somebody else drive afterwards. <laughs> yeah, of course. Bomb. Oh man, that that was quite the mouthful. No beer for me this week, man. It was it was a busy time. I didn't get out anywhere. Uh, I drank bourbon and wine, so no beer for me either. All right, uh, great show as always, guys. Thanks. We'll talk to you next week.